Hey guys, how's it going? Pierre Lou here, Real Wheel Deal. And today you're watching a, a set of video for me. It's actually a farewell to my Volk Racing T37 SL Black Edition. So if you don't want to watch a grown man cry, probably tune out right now. All right, so you're saying goodbye to Real Wheels. You know them like your whole life. So I'll crack one for the homie, you know? JDM boss. The real wheels. All right, so this is a little bit different than my normal videos because most times I don't do personal videos on this channel, as you guys know. But uh, behind me, you guys see it's my personal 86. I always want to give you guys like a backstory. First half is just a little personal story about the Volk wheels, and the second half, you know, we're gonna do technical dive through. We do the stuff you guys are used to seeing on this channel. If you don't want to watch, you know, the personal stuff, just get forward, learn a little bit about the T37 SL Black Edition. But we're just gonna start with the real story. As we're working my way through school, I didn't have any project cards. So I never bit the bug at that time. I kind of kept my head out of the clouds. You know, I'm really lucky now to be blessed to get to work in the industry. It's something that I loved my whole life and never thought eventually I would actually lead me to, to that kind of path. And uh, the other thing is I've always liked Volk racing. When I was young, you know, Need for Speed, Gran Turismo, any one of those like flash, you know, cartooning games and stuff that you played. Every time I put a wheel under, it was a Volk TE37. You know, TE37 does everything for me. And growing up, you know, it was the bronze classic TE. After I graduated, I had my first job. Even before I got that job, I knew it was gonna be like Volk Racing TE37, but I just didn't know which one. You know, I wanted the first one to be special. So luckily at that time, and this was before I knew anything about wheels, anything about the industry, uh, the Volk TE37 SL was like newly introduced. And you know, that's called a super lap super light version of T37, the black edition came out. And I was like, man, that's like the first limited edition T37 SL that ever came out. So I was like, that's the one I gotta get. I, I pulled the trigger. After all that work in my head of the clouds, my first real paycheck I got from my first big boy job, I just went and I bought the set of Volks. I think my first paycheck didn't even, didn't even cover it. But you know, my whole life, I was really into the real wheels. I really loved Volk. I, I skipped everything. I didn't have any like racer cars. I didn't have any vehicles that I put modded just a little bit. Like that first set of wheels, I just went right for the Volk T37. That's not, you know, to say anything cocky or anything about like, hey, your first set of wheels was Volks. If your philosophy is this stuff's important to you, or if you want to support the real industry, you'll you'll put in time, put in effort, you know, make a good choice and sail for the wheel you like. And when I bought those wheels, that was just for me. You know, I, I didn't have the channel, I wasn't in the industry. So these wheels are special to me because this is like pre-real wheel deal. This is before I was like so engulfed in the industry and now look at these wheels that, uh, you know, it's time for me to let them go. Uh, it's a little bit sentimental. One of the first videos I made for this channel, I'm unboxing my, my wheels and uh, now you're watching this one. This is the hundredth video I've made for the YouTube channel. So pretty big milestones. I thought uh, if I'm seeing these wheels away, uh, I might as well just put it into a video and let you guys know uh, why I went with these wheels. Okay, so the technical part I'm separating two pieces first is just a video about the wheels second part talking about the frs fitment so i'm at frs uh since 2012 that was the first year the car came out as a 2013 mall and i pre-ordered it so i had the first white one in the city i picked up right away and at that time for some reason they're always doing a staggered setup so there's three reasons you would normally do a staggered setup first reason people do staggered setup is for aesthetic reason front a little bit narrower the back is medium and big that gives it like a pretty good aesthetic performance appeal stance second reason people would choose to do a staggered set is if you're putting down a lot of power on the rear wheels and you need that extra width you can square it up to the front one or the back one would just be even wider then they would choose to do that obviously not a concern with uh my car the reason for staggered is you have a lot of weight bias so you know porsche run a lot of staggered uh if they have a lot of weight sitting on the back you know mid rear engine a lot of guys like running staggered wheels because that's where it's going to be taking a lot of the g's a lot of contact patch a lot of power all in the back of the car at the time when this vehicle came out people were putting staggered wheels on that and that was what everyone was doing some people were starting to move towards square uh i chose to go with a staggered set mostly i think at that time it's supposed to have aesthetic appeal so my 18 by eight and a half front wheel is actually has this flat face looks really reminiscent of the classic t 37 I grew up with and then my rear wheel was an 18 by 9 and a half plus 40 that one had a lot more concavity so that kind of resembles more of like what we think of when we think of a T37 in our modern time so having the staggered setup kind of gave me like the best of both worlds I could have like the classic TE look I could have like the new advanced kind of TE look so the T37 SL that's kind of like the bridge between you know the OG TE and now our modern TE second choice I went with that wheel you know black edition it was all black had this green spoke it was like loud it told everyone that you're running Volk I definitely had to have 
something that just popped and at that time that set uh, had just been released so I definitely went with those guys. You're, you have an FRS, BRZ, H6, you're running to run staggered or squared. Uh, I would probably tell you just to run a square set. Also another reason why uh, unfortunately I have to say goodbye to these wheels because uh, of the staggered setup, the amount of time I'm going to track. Uh, it's very hard to make tires rotate and it also affects the performance a little bit. All right, so a little bit of quick homework on the T37SL. Well, T37 OG came out in 1996, and they kind of kept that wheel. They had a couple special edition colors, but they never really made any uh, enhancements to the wheel until the T37 SL came out. And the T37 SL was first released in 2010, and that was when they released it. And the SL stands for Super Lap. The main thing for that wheel was a weight savings factor. So compared to the regular T37 in that shape, it would shave up to 400 grams off of the weight of the wheel. Uh, a couple other differences was that it couldn't run center caps to kind of prioritize its uh, weight saving and performance emphasis. 2012, they released the first special edition that's a t37 sl black edition one and a black edition uh is what you have here so that one is with the green fluorescent sticker this is my second set i think they, they fade pretty fast you leave them in the sun so if you're thinking about getting a set of uh, the black editions probably uh keep it away from the sun and actually like the black edition 2 had come out uh in 2018 which is the same kind of color scheme except they have a little bit of rim cutting and they call it redotting but it's like a special logo that they engrave on the edge of the lip but they follow the same you know black with the green sticker so it's pretty nice and uh yeah now it's 2020 so the t37 sl have been around for eight years but still you know amongst a favorite for performance racing tuners and they've done a couple other colors and also now they offer it in a lot of unique colors you know they can do like mag blue a lot of hyper colors they're doing so it's definitely grown a lot but the original color they had was pressed graphite and uh, i think the last couple of years they've also had another standard color called a press double black which is like similar to the black edition but it's like a very very glossy wheel and the and the spoke sticker is actually like a, a mirror finish sticker and a regular sl sticker you can definitely have seen that's like a red sticker and black edition is this just let you guys know about the weight uh because i have them on tires i'm not gonna weigh them off here but the rear at 18 by nine and a half probably around 18 pounds and at 18 by eight and a half i would say close to 17. so i'm uh, still a really light wheel even by today's standards so now i'm gonna dive into the details of the t37 sl uh 18 by eight and a half front so you can see here this is uh, a much flatter face this is uh plus 35 18 by eight and a half you can see the concavity uh, almost non-existent of course with the t37 sl uh, a couple of changes we have that uh, made different from the original og they started having this embossing book racing monoblock forge raised engineering made in japan uh another thing they introduced was of course this uh spoke decal and on the opposite side is this t37 sl so right away visually it sets it apart from the regular t37 og uh also the interior and the lip is really special on the black edition here what happened is it looks kind of like they machined the inside and they also machined the lip and then after that sprayed the black then after they machined the inside and the lip with a black on there what happened was they sprayed like a glossy smoke around the outside so this sets it apart from the t37 sl standard colors uh, obviously this bore here very large you can see i have my hub ring in there you can't run any center caps on it because it's a 5 by 100 you see the holes are a little bit closer so they don't really run to the edge of the center bore for the other ones they kind of get close to the edge whereas the og it, it runs almost right out into the edge here so turn my attention to the rear here you can see it looks just like a t37 but right here they cut out a ton of weight for the sl you know make sure it's super light the back of the spokes are still solid so we didn't do any spoke cutting at this time yet and of course we have our stick here so here it says 2012 december 13th so that means this set of wheels is almost eight years old that's when it was forged 2012 and here it's 18 by eight and a half plus 35 5 by 100 so that's all you need to know and now we're gonna go to the front and you can see how it fits in the front all right so we're at the front of my vehicle here and you can see the flush is pretty good i have a really meaty tire on here it's eight and a half wide but it's got 245 on there but you can see it's uh probably could use a little bit more flushes with a fender i'm running a five mil spacer because my other set of wheels i uh, guess pretty close to the brake caliber you can see here even with the 18 by eight and a half plus 35 with like a relatively narrow rim for today's standards i have really a ton of brake clearance really good brake clearance on a t37 which is what it's really known for so this one's the rear this is the 18 by nine and a half plus 40 you can see here has a pretty good uh, flushness it could use like a little bit more but you know being safe on the track i didn't want to hit the fenders too much and this one has a slight amount of concavity so this is like a phase three and a phase three and four on these wheels is where they start going concave whereas phase one and phase two are the ones that are perfectly flat looks wise about the same for aesthetics the only difference is the concavity of the wheel and this is kind of how close it looks to the frs so that concludes my farewell video for my t37 sl black editions first set of volks i ever bought first real wheel i've ever owned and i kind of like the first head start of me getting into industry i don't really tell you guys how much i appreciate you guys coming to watch the channel learning about wheels with me because uh really for the channel 
as I'm growing and watching it. That's as I'm learning about the wheel, same thing as you guys. So I'm glad I get to like deliver it to you. Appreciate you guys watching me. This is my hundredth video, so really big one. And uh, hopefully, you know, we can make a hundred more. I always get comments from you guys, what wheels you bought, what wheels you're putting. You guys are always sending me IG messages. So uh, really, I appreciate it a lot. And uh, you know, this wheel was a special one because this is uh, how it's all started and now we're here today. Thanks guys.